Okay, hello students. This is a continuation of chapter 17, Asymmetric Information. Uh, now we are at section 17.2, Market Signaling. Okay, remember the problem with asymmetric information is that one uh, party, either the buyer or the seller, has more information than the other party and therefore the, uh, there's a market failure in, terms of, in the sense that you cannot determine the price uh, in in a certain way yeah? because you do not know the quality of the product. So pricing uh, is the demand and supply placement will be a bit um, difficult. Yeah, It is not certain. So it depends on your perception. So you, you think whether you want to buy more, you think this is higher quality or you want to buy less because it's low quality and so on. So demand... Uh, if there is not enough info, so how can you go uh, around this issue, this problem? Let's say you try to give out signals or indicators that uh, but sellers send signals to buyers, for instance, conveying information about the product. Yeah? But the signal must be easier for high productivity people, yeah? example, uh, to give than for low productive people to give. Now, this is uh, an example of uh, if you are um, if you're applying for a job yeah, with other people how do you signal that you have high productivity that you are a better worker than the others okay so it's, it's the same you have asymmetric information I've got 10 people applying for the same job how do I know which one is better so only the the the, the applicant know themselves I don't know I can only see their resume but I don't know what what, what kind of productivity they will bring to the company. Yeah, whether they are willing to work hard, whether they are disciplined, whether they are creative, so I don't know. So a signal must be easier for high productivity people to give than for low productivity people to give. Right? Let's say the signal is um, uh, through education. Okay, let's take this case where uh, in A, if low productivity people will choose an education level of Y0 right? because cost, low, producti low productivity people, let's assume that the cost of them getting education is higher, not because, uh, not because the degree is higher, the cost is, let's just say that it's higher because it's much more difficult for them to they have to spend more in order to get their education or to arrive at a certain skill okay so let's say the cost of education to them is uh, 40 40k well for high productivity people who are much faster learners uh, they are much creative they are much more motivated so let's say the cost uh, is 20k yeah, because when you are low productivity, that means it must be something wrong for them. So for them to attain that, that level of education, let's say the level of the education required is or the standard uh, that the employer sets is why, why, uh, why start. Okay. Now low productivity people will choose why star to be four. Okay, here. Because the gain in earnings is greater than the cost. Okay, uh, if they are low productivity, uh, we say, uh, uh, for example, APL equals to MPL is one. Whereas high productivity people will have a higher average productivity and marginal, let's say two. Okay, so you see the difference. Okay, it takes them less. To be able to acquire certain skills because they are already high productive, high, highly productive people, and uh, their productivity is clearly twice than the low productivity people. Okay, so if they uh, work, their revenue will also be higher. Let's say 200k here, revenue earned for the company will be let's say 100. All right, so. How do we compare their, uh, whether they should have, how do we compare the decision? Whether the, whether the, the labor should be employed or not, 
and the cost of them getting the education that Y prime and the minimum Y prime do, uh, would they choose to get the the minimum Y prime? So this is the cost just now. Okay, and then this is optimal choice. The yeah, optimal choice is four. And here the optimal choice is uh, at four, but for them this is the, the cost is lower. So at four, uh, they have already achieved more than the uh, the value of college education is worth. But for for them, if they want to achieve four, the value of education is one, but the cost is higher, right? So they will not find it. Uh, worthwhile to take the education yeah that means to have to take the the or to incur the cost of education uh, if the cost of education is lower than the uh, if, if the gain from education is lower than the is, is higher than the cost okay they will only this one in this case why what, what is this case this one is the gain is lower than the cost so it's very expensive to reach that y prime but this one the gain is lower than the cost because their cost of getting education is low okay This is the explanation. So, uh, obtain the level of ed education that benefits them, it's at least at, last, uh, at large, as large or larger than the cost of this education. So, you will see that this is a signal that can only work for people with uh, education, uh, people with high, pro high productivity people, which is signaled by education. Yeah. Education or skills or training, experience, for instance, all that can count you know, to show that you have high productivity. All right. Um, another method is to give guarantees and warranties, and I'm sure you are familiar with this. Companies that have uh, companies know that when they give out guarantees and warranties, they are, these are not just words. You know, if people come back and send. If people come back and ask you to repair the goods and during the warranty period or during the guarantee period, these are additional costs. So to to signal high quality, high quality goods usually have long warranties, right? And low quality goods have very short warranties, two weeks, one week kind of warranty. So this is a way where the market can also differentiate between high quality products and high quality uh, and low quality products. Yeah, just like just now, in the labor market, you can differentiate high productivity people and low productivity people through their experience or through their education. Okay. All right, let's look at uh, moral hazard. This is an issue that uh, is always associated with asymmetric information. Uh, behavior becomes, it's a market failure. Yeah? Just because we purchase something, we have, a, a, we, a, the, the market behavior is uh, more reckless or more risky. For example, if you, uh, if you buy insurance, okay, just because you have insurance for hospitalization, you have insurance for accidents, you tend to be, you bought an expensive insurance. So you think that oh, it's okay for me, you take it, you take it more lightly uh, in, uh, about taking care of your diet or taking care of your um, driving, uh, you know, making sure that you, you drive safely. Because you say that I've already purchased insurance and uh, the cost to me is 
now covered by the insurance and when we say covered by insurance means it is spread over the many many people who buy insurance eh? you're sharing the risk with other people so it creates a moral hazard it makes you less uh, disciplined or less uh, careful because you assume that whatever cost that comes with your bad behavior will now be shared with other people the cost now is no longer big for you all right now let's take this graph this graph shows that if you pay if you think that marginal cost per mile yeah per week is 150 per mile so it's very small 150 and that 150 is made up of one hundred one dollar, which is the cost of your car, cost of your petrol, and then another fifty cents, which is the cost of your the insurance that you pay. Okay, and with this one fifty and no moral hazard, that means you you continue to behave as you behave before. That means you don't become careless just because you have the insurance. Then you would drive at one. You would drive around one hundred miles per week. So this is your behavior. Okay, but if you think that you have insurance, so although you pay one hundred fifty, but the risk from the uh, from uh, of the car or your safety is now shared with other people, so you perceive it to be only one dollar. Your cost is just one dollar. Then it's not one fifty. Yeah, it's not two dollars. It's not three dollars. It's just one dollar because fifty two is very small, very minimum compared to the cost uh, that could be incurred in a case of an accident. So you you act as if you know my cost is just one dollar. Okay, so you see the okay, perceives the cost per dollar to be one dollar. Uh, the, the cost per mile to be one dollar. So he would drive more. This is just in terms of qual uh, quantity of miles that they drive. You did not, you cannot measure the the quality of their driving. Yeah, but you can see that when they perceive that the cost, marginal cost of driving, is cheaper because whatever, if any unfortunate incident happens, you know the cost is minimal for them. Then they tend to drive more than they need to. Yeah, they tend to drive more than they need to. So this is what we call moral has it okay please read the examples that are very good but we won't spend time on that so much uh, 17.4 principal agent problem uh, again an asymmetric example of asymmetric uh, information in a company okay so let's say you have one organization uh, you have the principal the principal are the shareholders yeah, or the owners and the agent to carry out transactions or any uh, uh, the company's uh, management is the managers. Managers. So we call this principal, we call this one, this principal and this one, agents. So there is asymmetric information because shareholders do not have the same information as the manager. They will not be able to know the day-to-day -day decisions. They will not be able to get uh, to. Uh, they won't ask permission for everything that they do, right? So there is asymmetric information. Shareholders cannot really check on the behavior and the decisions made by managers. So this is called principal agent issues. And how do you solve this? Um, well, management is actually the ones who does the day-to-day -day decision and they might pursue their own objective if the objective is aligned to the shareholders it's okay but if it's not so how do you uh, check or how do you control so there are many ways uh, many methods yeah? the shareholders can complain loudly they can have a market for corporate control so you can have auditors you can have multiple uh, exercise of of um, uh, management uh, checks eh? and they can be uh, very rigorous uh, rigorous selection of uh, managers that means that shareholders will say to the company's managers you guys better follow what we say otherwise we will fire you and we will hire managers that are more aligned to our objectives Okay.
so that is that that's the same now. This uh, this problem is the same whether it is private enterprise or public enterprise. You will see later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can also control by reducing bonuses, uh, yeah, benefits and all that. So, what if it is a government agency? Same thing. The government uh, or the principal is actually the people, right? The people, and then the, they are our. Uh, the government uh, government officers are actually the agents. Okay, so how is this done? Uh, this can take you a few days to discuss this. Yeah, with both private and as well as uh, public enterprises, the managers of the government agency must not just think of their own agency. Yeah, they must subject to the rigors of the managerial job market as well. So the recommendation is that they must not only they must still be monitored. Yeah, they must still be monitored. There must be a, a standard minimum standard of performance. There must be a competition between agencies to increase the efficiency. There must be also competition for the managers. Yeah, that means they must be given bonus accordingly. Uh, to their performance. Uh, if they don't perform, they will have to be kicked out and you bring in managers again. So they, this is what we call the rigors of the job market. Yeah? They are subjected to the quality, uh, to the demand and supply for high quality managers. Uh, then the agent will be more uh, careful of its objectives, yeah? of its work with respect to the principal agent problem. Now, let's say we take this example of low effort, high effort manager, okay, or oh, sorry, agent. And then in the time where you can, uh, the, but the market or the economy uh, is, uh, is difficult to predict. So you can have a good economy, yeah, good luck, and also a bad economy in recession. But the effort, the person must make low, this one in this example, a person makes low effort, whether it's good economy or bad economy, this is the effort. So they got 10 and 20. But the other person uh, put in a lot of effort. Yeah? So during uh, a, a poor economy, it receives 2,000, makes 20,000 revenue. Uh, during a good economy, makes 40K revenue. Okay. So let's say the owner uh, or the principal offer this payment scheme that if you put in uh, if you put in the revenue is only 10 and 20 yeah, 10 and 20 then your wage uh, or extra wage that you get uh, performance bonus or whatever you call it is zero but if you manage to get 40k which is high effort and during a good time we will give you a wage of 24k all right, so under the system, the repair person will choose to make a high level amount of effort. Okay, another option is to propose a revenue sharing arrangement. Just now that one was a performance bonus arrangement, but a revenue sharing arrangement is also uh, good. When revenues are greater than 18,000, okay, they will receive that as their wage. So if you make low effort, uh, for instance, just now, okay, low effort, they will not get anything, right? They will only get if low effort but good luck. Uh, but if they put in high effort, bad luck, they will still get extra too. If good luck, they will get extra 18. Uh, sorry, extra 20, uh, 40 minus... 18, they will get 22, okay? Sorry. Okay, expected payment. Now, why we say expected payment? Because 20 and 40, so the mean is... 30 and so 30 minus 18 will be 12 right because you do not know whether it's going to be bad luck or good luck so you take the mean 
the mean and then the promised uh, just now is above 18 so the mean the mean that you can expect to get yeah expected mean okay so what i said just now we skip 17.5 and just quickly 17.6 they don't have so many videos to cut mm, ai asymmetric information in labor market yeah, the efficiency wage theory efficiency wage theory is when uh, you try to um, give a high salary yeah, or the efficiency wage we call the WE. WE is a wage that the firm will pay to an employee as an incentive not to shirk. Not to shirk. Shirk means to be um, to be lazy, right? Because there's asymmetric information, so you cannot really monitor everything that your employee does. Every one of your employees. So it's, there is definitely asymmetric information. Uh, that, uh, that where the where the where the labor knows more about his productivity and his effort than the employer okay so how does how does an employer make sure that the 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 labor or the employee give as much as they can yeah? does does as much as they can and does therefore does not shirk does not become lazy or does not try to uh, slack off okay Okay, very easy analysis here. Let's say we start with DL, you know, demand for labor and supply of labor, assuming that this is the, uh, so therefore this is the employed. Okay, assuming that there's a fixed supply of labor and therefore the equilibrium will be here, right? DL and SL, equilibrium here and L prime, sorry, L star is the amount of people employed. Okay. But employer now wants to put in a no shirking constraint. That means no shirking constraint is if you if we will give you higher and higher wages, so it becomes upward sloping. Okay? It becomes higher and higher wage. If when we employ, right? Higher and higher wage when we employ more. But with the condition that you must not uh, to give the necessary, uh, give the wage necessary to keep workers from shirking. So if they lose this opportunity, every uh, and now everyone is being paid W star, right? But we give them higher salary than W star, so that they will not want to lose the job. If they lose the job. They go back to they go back to the labor market to another company. Then they will have to receive, they will have to make do with W star again. Uh, so now this company offers a higher salary than the W star than the market rate, but with condition or, or with the purpose, with the objective of encouraging them not to shirk and yeah, not to slack off. So if that happens, then. The NSC now becomes the supply curve because it's a price uh, that the seller is willing to pay, okay? But the equilibrium will become, this is now the supply curve, the NSC supply curve. So now it is, the equilibrium is at LE. But LE, you employ less than the L star just now. But you pay more. Okay, so such that the employees will say that, oh, I better hold on to my job, I better not slack off because this is a higher salary. I won't be able to enjoy the salary if I go back to the market where there is no monitoring and then uh, uh, employers are not, are not confident of giving as high salary because of possibility of shirking. Okay, so this is what we call efficiency wage or efficient wage. Alright. Okay, thank you very much for bearing with me. This is the end of chapter 17.